Hello everybody, this is Casey and welcome to my channel. Um, well, here's an interesting one today. We've got an Apollo Solar Charge Controller. I'm sure most of you are asking, well, what's Apollo Solar? Well, it's a company out of Bethel, Connecticut that uh, has history uh, working with NASA uh, designing charge controllers for them. They decided to do off-grid solar equipment in, I don't know, like 2007 or 8, and they came up with some pretty nifty products. Uh, this is their T80HV, that stands for High Voltage Charge Controller. Uh, it's got some pretty cool features. Well, I guess the sad part about Apollo Solar is they went out of business in, uh, I think, 2015. They went bankrupt, and you could kind of tell even back in 2011 when I bought this controller that the writing was on the wall. They just weren't getting the business they expected. Uh, but it's kind of interesting because it's, it's, it's a really good controller and ahead of its time in a lot of ways too. It has some interesting features, like it has a large 80 millimeter fan, which so many controllers do not. Uh, great access. Uh, it was integrated with a, it also worked with a inverter, an Apollo inverter that was also wonderful. I've never had one fail. They've been really good. Um, yeah, these are pretty good units. They were pricey at the time, though. I think I was buying them direct from Apollo for, I think, around 800 bucks. That's quite, quite expensive for, for an 80 amp controller. The one unique feature was it, it, it could accept up to 200 volts input. Uh, look at that access, though. I mean, you've got your terminals right here. They're, I believe they accept one gauge wire. They're all spread out. Um, lots of room to, to do your wiring, and that's just, this is probably the easiest to wire charge controller out there that I've ever done, that I've ever come across. Uh, so they were really smart there. It's, it's pretty cool. I mean, like, it's a box. It's not exactly designed to win any beauty contests, but it just has to, you know, it just has to convert high voltage to lower voltage and, and a charge control, you know, it's not boil your batteries over. And that's what it does. Um, you've got your large fan back here. Totally easy to replace. It's like, what is it? Well, I guess you take the cover off. I don't know, just six screws or something, and this plate comes off. You unplug the ribbon cable. It's totally user accessible. You're right in here. There's your caps. Um, there's your transformers for the DC to DC converter. I guess they're called bucks in this case. Everything's just beautiful heat sink. I mean this heat sink alone probably cost Apollo so Solar quite a bit of money. Um, it's pounds of aluminum heat sink. Just a really good controller. If I had known they were going to business I would have stocked up on these. Um, I loved them. And they did have a flaw that, and I, I don't know if Apollo ever realized what was happening. The flaw was if you hooked it up as the, as these were common, you pretended these were common negatives and you just had one negative going to your uh, your switch gear, and then you, you didn't have a negative going to your PV or your battery, you tried to share these like with the Outback controller, it would cook um, some kind of a surge protector or something in the middle right here. It would, it would just cook the controller. It would, and I, and you know how I found out? I did it, and I broke one. Um, it worked, actually, it's funny, it worked for a while, especially with the smaller solar array, but once I added to the solar array, it, 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 it fried some circuitry right around it, right in here. And they actually repaired it. Um, yeah, that was, they had great customer service while they were still in business. Uh, you know, it's just, there's other companies out there, and they just didn't make it. Uh, other good features are, it's got system integration with the Apollo inverter and it would network through here. Uh, it also had remote monitoring, which in 2010, that was not happening. No one was doing remote monitoring. So you actually slid a remote monitoring card. I actually had this set up with remote monitoring for a few years. Um, a lot of really good features. Uh, the knockouts, you've got one inch or inch and a quarter, um, two ground lugs, uh, 
what other, you know, the fan is a big one, just a normal size fan. And here's a comparison in size. It was a little on the large side, but large size, but you know, you can make room with your upgrade solar system. So like this is an Outback 80 and it has 150 volt input, but terminals, and I consider this with pretty good terminals, like these, these accept up to number two wire. Uh, but, you know, comparatively, look at how much room you have in here. Uh, and then look at the fan. It's got a little fan on the top. I think it's got a, uh, like a 50 millimeter or something fan. So it has to turn faster. And then the 60 amp outback has like a little tiny fan right here that's hard to change. And it screams. You know, that's like my criticism with a lot of charge controllers are the fan. And, of course, the terminals. Like, I love the midnight classic charge controllers, but the terminals are, are really small and closely spaced, and that's my biggest gripe with them. But just a, just a, just a tank, just a decent controller. So, I mean, there it is. There's the Apollo Solar charge controller. You don't, you're not going to see many videos on YouTube about, about these, on YouTube, excuse me. So, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hope to get more videos out soon.